So we're here at the uh, Under the Radar Cloud Conference here at the Microsoft campus, which is a lot of fun, and we're meeting a lot of cool startups, and I keep seeing you and hearing about you and wonder a little bit more about you. So who are you? So my name is Oren Teich. I am VP of Product at Heroku. Heroku is a Ruby cloud platform provider, so we do platform as a service with uh, Ruby language. And so wh why do I need Heroku? Why not just buy Amazon or Rackspace and, and get Ruby on Rails and do that? Why, why do I need something different? Right, well, it's a general question of infrastructure as a service versus platform, right? And so we're focused on developers. And what's great is on Heroku, you develop your application just like you normally would, any standard Ruby application. You type git push Heroku and you're done. That's literally the entire deployment process. It's done over Git. And then you say you get featured on Facebook, Twitter, whatever, and you need to scale it. You just go in, you move a slider on our add-on on our pricing page, you just shoot, you move the slider, and done. It takes two, three seconds. So you could handle 20, 50, 100 times the load. So we've got anything from you know small guys who put up a blog all the way to Best Buys running uh, some sites on us. We have some of the biggest Facebook apps. So it's just, it's all about developer productivity. You know, it just makes life so easy. Why, why focus on operations when you don't need to? And it's only for Ruby on Rails, right? So if you need a Cassandra, you know, uh, cloud thing, you, you don't need, you, you can't use you, or can you? Well, so the way that applications are evolving is really fascinating, right? So you asked, like, like that question's like my favorite in the world. So, so there's the programming language that you write your code in, but then there's all the components that make up that as well, right? And so there's a database, and you could have a NoSQL database, and you have all the components and all this stuff. And so we actually have an add-ons architecture. So any third party can hook in to our service and get access to it. So today, for example, we actually launched here at Under the Radar an announcement where uh, Northscale, who's a memcache provider, they have an add-on on our platform. And we have a bunch of NoSQL ones coming out. So if you as a developer want things, and now it's like a, an, it, there's an app store. And you just go, yeah, I want that. So I want full text search. I want new relic monitoring. I want a NoSQL database. Click, 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 and you're done. So you actually have quite a bit of flexibility in what you can use. That sounds really cool. Sounds like you're competitive with Rackspace a little bit on the cloud, huh? I have no doubt. I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, we're trying to do one thing, right? You want to get applications running. So, to some sense, everyone's competitive with everyone. You know, that said, there's a lot of partnership because what happens, we find, is you have add-on providers who are creating things, and they need a flexibility you can't get on Heroku. So they'll go and create that on a Rackspace, on an Amazon somewhere, and then they want to get to our developers. We have, we have over, uh, let's see, today we have 59,000 applications on the platform, and we're doing 1,200 applications created every single week. So you're seeing this, it's going to be 60-some-odd thousand. I mean, it's just off the charts. So we can bring this volume, so someone will create something, they can deploy it on Rackspace. They can do an integration with Heroku through the add-on, and then our tens of thousands of, cust of developers can get access to that. So it's kind of a, you know, some sense of, of course, everyone competes from the other. It's really more of a way that people can work together. Very cool. What are you seeing happen in the marketplace? Uh, you know, wh what are the trends that you're seeing happen? What, because you're in the center of yep. the developer world. A, sure. a lot of people, like Twitter was built on Ruby and Rails, yep. right? Yep. What are you seeing happen? Oh, my God. There's so many fun things. So one, NoSQL is fascinating, right? And it's such a... It's, it's, it's a total, first off, it's a total misnomer because like it implies there's one thing and there really isn't, right? There's like three distinct use cases. There's like a big data use case, there's a high performance use case, and then there's like a, just a document use case. And in each of those, we're seeing huge trends. You know, you're seeing things like Couch and Mongo, you're seeing things like Redis and Cassandra and all these different components, and they each have their own niche. And it's fascinating because we'll see, you know, a Facebook app who, you know, a typical Facebook app, like, a stupid thing like uh, you're throwing food at someone. If you think about that, you, th you food fight. Well, what's actually happening is every time you throw food, you are doing a database insert. And so these are things that can have 10 million users. They're trying to do uh, thousands of inserts per second, so, but they really don't care about the data. So they have one particular use case. And it's not that the data quantity is vast because they need to do it and then they can like throw it away, right? So that's one use case. And so we see people doing that. Then there's other people who are trying to track ridiculous amounts of data. I was talking to one guy. They have 40,000 requests a second, 40,000 data points a second. That they, yeah, just crazy, right? So 40,000 data points a second that they want to track. So there's another use case. So we're seeing this really bifurcation, more trifurcation in what's going on with data. That, that's probably one of the most interesting. Uh, the other one is, is a, a composite application, I guess would be the best way. So you, you write 
a front end in Ruby, you have a back end in some other language, you bring them all together some, through some glue, some RESTful APIs. So you're seeing people hook up all these interesting components into what ultimately, you know, you can think of as an application, but it's really almost a distributed set of applications running across the cloud. Very cool. Um, do you see Ruby as continuing to be hot? Obviously, you've based your business on it. Yep. Are there are there other languages that are starting to get on your uh, whiteboard, I guess, at work and starting to think about, you know, should, should we uh, support that language as well? Right. So, so we are a Ruby company. We support Ruby. We've seen, uh, if anything, an increase in growth. Uh, there's so much demand. We see all the time people like, why can't there be a Heroku for Python? Why can't there be a Heroku for Java? And, of course, that's stuff we pay attention to. But, I mean, the reality is that there are only 16 of us. We're a small company. We're growing like mad. Higher, come jobs at Heroku. Come anyway, for growing like mad, and uh, the the opportunity in Ruby today is just fantastic. Uh, I mean, we, we actually have even seen people who the value prop for Heroku is so strong that they've said, you know what? Uh, yeah, I know I'm a X. Insert your language of choice here, but I'm going to learn because ultimately. I mean, let's be honest, learning language is not that hard. I'm going to figure out how to use this language because the platform and the ecosystem is so powerful that it just, it, it'll ultimately save me time and money. Interesting. Um, tell me a little bit about your business fundamentals. How are you funded and, yeah. and what's happening there? And then how, how do you charge? Right. Uh, explain to me if, I, if I'm a developer and I'm building an app, how do I pay? pay? Sure. Okay, so as a company, we've been around for two years. We were originally a Y Combinator company. Uh, founded by, funded by Redpoint with a, a round a year and a little bit ago. Uh, still going. We are, uh, you know, things are going great, having a blast. Uh, in terms of how we charge, so it's a utility-based model. And it actually, if you go to our site, if you go to heroku.com slash pricing, um, I will toot our horn. We have the prettiest pricing page you've ever seen. I guarantee it. Money back guarantee. Uh, so the way it works is you pick a database that you want, what size database you want, and then you're totally dynamically scaling your concurrency. So you can think about is how many, you know, if an application, for example, you have your written your code and it takes 200 milliseconds to respond to a user, right? Well, that means that you can do five in one second, right? 200 milliseconds, five in one second. So now just how many concurrencies do you want there? And that's all you do. You just pick it. And you can do that at any point. And it takes us about half a second to change it. So you want to go up for a few minutes and then down and up and down. You can just do that. And there's an API. Can you do that programmatically? Yep. There's an API to access that as well. So it's we even have people whose programs self-introspect themselves, determine that they are, oh wait, I'm starting to run a little slower and crank up the concurrency measure. And we just charge you five cents per hour per concurrent connection you're supporting. Very cool. That's a really neat neat way to, to plan it. Thanks. So uh, when are you going to get bought by, uh, let's say, Rackspace? <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, that's above my pay grade, but I, I don't think it'll be happening anytime soon. We're having such a blast independent, and it, the growth is just so amazing. We're, we're really enjoying ourselves. Very cool. Well, if, if you are on the block, give us a call <laughs> because uh, it's a really cool service. All right. So. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much.